welcome everyone to the February 8th, 2024 Planning Board Evening Session. Just a, a note on, on safety issues that there are two exit doors in case of emergency. Just go through those, go downstairs and out the front door. Uh, also, we have a sign-in sheet that everyone who wants to speak has signed in and we have people waiting on Zoom. But uh, so you don't have to sign in unless you've already signed this. So with that, uh, we'll have a roll call. Chair LaFaro. Present. Vice Chair Finity is absent. The Secretary is here. Board Member Catalinato is absent. Board Member Mutu. Present. Board Member Neely. Present. Board Member Fulham. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join in for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we're going to start in um, number four, if anyone is here, for 64 Lewis Road. There was not sufficient notice, and so it cannot be on the agenda. So if anyone's here for that, it will be rescheduled at some point. Correct, in 21 Columbia. I also don't have and anything In 21 right Columbia, now. we have no, no notice. You're waiting for someone, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm waiting for uh, Ms. Hamer to, uh, she has the affidavit, and uh, so it may be on then. Okay, so we'll, we have two hearings before that, so yes. we'll hang on. Okay, the first is um, Wave Center for Veterinary Emergencies. <coughs> we have sufficient notice? We uh, do, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Are we? Yep. Please take notice that in accordance with local law number 14 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, February 8th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the site plan special exception entitled Wave Center for Veterinary Emergencies. The site plan special exception application process to alter the interior of a 3,751 square foot one-story commercial building and convert the building to a veterinary service use with associated pre-existing parking on a 60,583 square foot parcel located within the Hampton Bay Zoning District, the water quality WQI high priority area and New York State archaeologically sensitive area situate at 1054 Montauk Highway, Hamlet of Watermill, Suffolk County tax map number 900-102-1-19. Good evening. Okay. Lisa Poyer with Twin Forks Permits on behalf of the applicant. The application before you is for a special exemption um, site plan application to convert the retail building that used to be house Ethan Allen into a emergency veterinary site plan. hospital. Yeah, just an aerial. No, oh, it's off. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the property is located in HB zone, <laughs> highway business. And the properties to the east and the west are both HB zoned. The property to the north is the railroad, and the property across Montauk Highway is CR60. The property size is 60,593 square feet. And we believe that it meets all of the requirements for the special exception use. The project has received the variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the lot line setbacks for the front existing building. And therefore, I believe it does meet all the special exemption uses. There we are. <coughs> there you go. <laughs> right now, the property also contains special trade contractor use in the middle and a cell tower in the back. So I'm just here to answer any questions that the board or the public may have regarding okay. the application. We have sufficient parking. Yes, we do. Yeah. That's, that's shown on the site plan. Right. Um, so we've seen it before. D are there any questions from the board on the application? I, what, what were the lot, lot line variants? How much? Uh, for the front yard, it was 39.5, I'm sorry, 10.3 foot granting relief. So we're having a 39.7 foot setback where 50 feet is required. For one side, we have a side yard setback at 10.5 feet. That's in that back corner there where 50 feet is required, 
And the other side is 34.9 feet setback where 50 is required. And then again, the ZBA did grant the relief for that. Right. There's no changes to the existing building other than <coughs> interior. Okay, thank you. This got setback relief from the zoning board? Yes. For an existing building? Yes. Because it doesn't meet the uh, one of the con Special conditions. Special exception criteria. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Th okay. That's where I was going. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused for a minute. And it's yes, an correct. It's an odd angle it's, of the it building is an odd angle. that hits that corner. Yeah, There's no correct. way to get a setback. Um, anyone like to speak to this application? Anyone on Zoom, Kevin? No one on Zoom. And no one on Zoom. Okay. Great. So hearing that, we'll um, close with a 10, ten day, ten day written comment yeah. period. Motion by motion. Kate, Aye. second by George. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, five in favor, two absent. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Number two, Southampton Dog. So do we have sufficient notice? We do, Madam Chair. Thank you. George. Uh, please take notice that in accordance with local law number 14 of 2022, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, February 8, 2024, at 6 p.m. at Town Hall, 116 Hampton Road, Southampton, and via video conferencing to consider the site plan special exception application entitled Southampton Dog. The application is for the establishment of a dog daycare use kennel in an existing 8,850 square foot building located on a 40,047 square foot parcel in the LI 40 zoning district situated at 476 County Road 39A, Hamlet of North Sea, Suffolk County tax map 900-132-3-17.2. It is yours. Give us your name, please, for the record. My <coughs> name is Maciej Grabowski. Okay, thank you. Um, so we, uh, as you know, we want to turn this building uh, from uh, previous uh, usage, which was retail, into a dog daycare uh, center. Um, we talked to the other board regarding uh, uh, the fencing and the signage already. Um, and um, I think we are ready to roll if uh, you are uh, okay with that project. Well, you've been in front of us, actually, yes. right? Yes, yes, several times. With a little pooch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's how you brought a puppy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing this week. Nothing, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we looked at it pretty much. You've moved that front area to the back. Correct. Yeah. That's great. Okay, it's a, it's a much needed facility. Yeah. Um, I, but I think, so I think we have some people who wish to speak to this. Um, can't, can't make out the name, Ma Manny Gaibo? Ga oh, I think I signed in. Uh, they told us to sign in if we will that's speak. You. And okay. I will speak. Right, that's so. you. So, Edna Teich. Edna, you want to speak? Yeah, come. You're on the record here. dog owners here, as you know. Your name, give us your I'm, name. I'm Edna Teich. Right. And as a dog owner myself, always looking for somebody to take care of a dog, which is difficult. And it's very hard to trust people on, off the street, basically. I know them, and um, my dog would leave me to stay with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much she's in love with Maciej and his wife. So I hope that we will happen. You support it? Yes, I very much so. Great. Good. Thank you, Edna. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to speak to this application? Anyone on Zoom? Kevin? For Southampton no Dog? No? Okay. We're familiar with this, and uh, we'll move forward, and we'll close with a 10-day written comment period. Motion? Motion by George, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions. Five in favor, two absent. Thank you. Thank very you so much. much. Thank you. Uh, we still don't have um, notice on do Columbia. You, do, you, do you have the. Yes. Okay. Uh, this has got to be oh, you do? Sorry. Okay. I apologize. Okay. My partners are outside. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. 
She just went she looking just for you. I'm going to leave him right here. <laughs> Doing laps. <laughs> Oh boy, this is going to take me a bit. You want to take five minutes? Yeah, or we can move on to the uh, Bud Hampton. That's fine. It's going to yeah. take me a while. So we'll move on to Bud Hampton. Uh, we don't need notice because it's, uh, it was uh, just adjourned. Um, and we don't need to read it into the record. So Carl Benincasa representing the applicant. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Carl Minacasa, 860 Montauk Highway for the applicant. As noticed, this is the second hearing we're having. At the first one, I went through really the limited nature of this board's consideration uh, relative to the application. Um, I'll briefly go over again that uh, the analysis that this board needs to undertake ultimately in granting site plan and special exception approval is one, does it meet parking uh, requirements under the code? It's an existing 992 square foot retail uh, building. The building is not changing at all. Uh, as a result, under the code, uh, six parking spaces are required. We are providing 20 spaces with two ADA compliant spaces. So we far exceed what's required under, uh, under the parking regulations of the town code. As for the special exception standards, um, there are certain sensitive receptors that this cannot be within uh, specific distances from. Those are schools. It can't be within 500 feet. Uh, they're also, um, they're not allowed on the same road within 200 feet of a building occupied by a house of worship. And it can't be in a thousand feet radius of another dispensary. Um, all of those conditions are met by this site. Uh, this is in a zone that the town board determined was appropriate for this use. Um, and, and a parcel that meets all the requirements of special exception standards. <coughs> that is essentially the scope of this consideration. As you know, given the last time we were here, given the nature of the proposed use, there were several comments uh, from the community, which is why we are having this second hearing. Um, at this time, I think we just open it up to members of the community if anyone's here to speak but that's all i have to say again I, it's a very I just, straightforward I just application have a couple of a couple of questions sure um we had presented to us a full site plan of the property of the connor property into dividing it into several sections for the highway business they were developing it included in that package was this parcel as part of the overall site plan now, can you tell me where that site plan is at? That has been withdrawn. It has been withdrawn. Right now, that are, there is nothing pending with respect to that site plan. So this parcel that was part of that is now a standalone parcel? Is that what you're the, saying? This is the, the only application before this board at this point is this parcel. Okay. I wanted to know that for clarification. Understood. Thank you. But is it a separate parcel? Yes. It's a separate standalone parcel. Okay, so we do have people who want to speak. Um, let me see. Craig, Craig Connor, do you would you like to speak? Yeah. Greg Connor, owner of the property, 83 Wheaton Way, Watermill, New York, is my home address. Um, <clears throat> I just want to state that last time was kind of a, a big uh, to-do. I mean, everybody was telling everybody how they don't want it there and how it's, they, they're unhappy with it. And that was something that should have been addressed with the town board when this was a public hearing then. In front of us now is just a site plan review for a simple retail project. And that's how I like to be considered. Um, I was quite upset when <clears throat> the people who spoke against it actually made it personal against my family. And that was um, uncalled for and unnecessary, especially for my community, which my family and I have given back to 10 times over, over the years. And I was going li to list the, um, the deeds of my family in the Bridgehampton community, but I've decided against it. Um, I'm going to let them stand alone. 
but uh, my family and I have done a lot for our community, and I don't understand the vitriol, the vitriol that we were given the other last time. So, if people would like to speak, that's terrific. But if they keep it against, not against my family, and want to keep just the project, but nothing against my family, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any other names on this sign-in list. Your name? Hugo Riva. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you had CD. <clears throat> I didn't know what CD stood for. Canada Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I'm putting Bud Hampton, okay? <laughs> so please. <clears throat> Hello, how you doing? How's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Hugo Rivas. I represent the Long Island Cannabis Coalition. Um, we're in favor of this situation here. We feel it's much needed in our communities. Um, what we're seeing out there is uh, a lot of um, illegal activity happening with um, illicit stores and such that are operating at the moment. We feel like stores like such as these will help our community in the sense of legalizing, protecting our communities. The ways these stores are ran, the dispensaries, they're really, really well protected. They're, they're super duper regulated. So um, I just feel like having a safer avenue, especially now that it's legalized, we just have to you know, bring it in a, in a respectful and responsible manner. So we just appreciate it. People will understand that this is something good from our studies, all the research that we have done. Um, myself, I run, <coughs> I run a, a, a youth program in soccer and youth sports. So I, I seek positive things for, the, for our youth and stuff like that in our communities, and I feel like a dispensary will protect our children. So that's my main concern, is protection against our children and stuff like that. So I know for a fact that the regulations are meant to protect the community, and they do so the way they operate. I would, I would suggest people to go to other dispensaries if they want to see how one runs, like Happy Days in Farmingdale that just opened up, or even Strange Stars. And it's 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 a it's a it's, a, it's, a, it's very nice, very beautiful, ran very nice security, everything. So I just want people to know that this is very good for our communities. Um, it's very good, and just please, if any any questions or anything, um, I'm here. Ask me. Um, I give you my information, so you can reach out, and we're, we're willing to help out and answer any question that you need in order to be informed. And you know, so. Thank you very much for your time. Can you tell me the association you're with again? I'm with the Long Island Cannabis Coalition, and I am the vice president. Okay. And my and name is Hugo Rivas. Do you live in Southampton? Uh, no, I actually live in Central Islip. But like I said, I, I'm, our organization is in Long Island, so we, we're all over the mm -hmm. place. And Can you um, provide, if you don't have it right now, just um, your membership geographic distribution, just so that we can consider the representation within Southampton Town and yeah. what you're getting at, mm -hmm. right? A hundred percent, yes. That would be and, helpful. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll also be happy to share some of the information that we have from OCM that we've been distributing to the rest of the, um, the town, so you just <coughs> have more information and are well informed, but it's a very good thing for the communities. Okay. Submit it to the uh, planning department and they'll disperse it to sure. the planning board members. Okay. Um, can I get a card or something? Because I'm not... Or just can I get the information on the website? I'll get it for you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone here in the audience live who'd like to speak? Otherwise, we'll go to the Zoom. So, Kevin, do we have some people on Zoom? We got one person right now. Okay. We're going to raise our hand, but I'll let the one person right now. Okay. Good evening. It looks like I'm live now, right? Yes, you're, you're on. Yep. Uh, hi. Good evening. Thank you uh, for allowing me a few minutes of your time. My name is Neil Kaufman. I'm the managing partner of Kaufman McGowan PLLC. We are one of the leading corporate cannabis law firms on somewhere on Long Island and in New York State, and some would say in the country. We're based in Hop Hock. We are counsel to Bud Hampton LLC in connection with their state licensing and corporate matters. 
We've been actively involved in the cannabis industry for almost 10 years and have been very pleased to see the incredible professionalization that has occurred in the industry. Um, we are very happy um, to represent Bud Hampton. Bud Hampton is, in essence, everything that New York State is looking for in a retail cannabis operation in that it is family owned and operated, owned by a social equity applicant, and has submitted an application for licensure with the state. And if, if that license approved, would open at these premises. These premises in particular, I think, are an outstanding location uh, both for Bud Hampton and for the community, especially being located on the south side of Montauk Highway with, we all know, all the traffic that proceeds eastbound, um, you know, on weekends and preceding weekends, no one has to make a left-hand turn uh, into uh, this premises to continue on their way east, which is a significant safety benefit for the community. Um, I'm confident that this operation will be run professionally. It'll be run well, um, as has been increasingly common uh, throughout this industry, and will be a great friend to the community. Um, I have many clients that operate retail cannabis stores. They, they generally all contribute to the local community, work with the local authorities, work closely with the local police department, and are great neighbors. In particular, in this area, where fairly close by, there is a significant strip of illegal black market operators. <coughs> I think it will be a tremendous benefit to the community to have a state legal store that sells products that have been tested and that we know what's in them. And frankly, the more our local people can acquire these products in a safe environment where they've been totally tested and we know they're not toxic, the better it is for the entire community. Um, so that's really all I wanted to say. Uh, I would be in favor, obviously, of this application, and I think it'll be a tremendous benefit to the community. Let me ask you a question. In your comments, you sure. said that they were awaiting a license. Does Bud Hampton not have a license from the state? No, the state has not issued any licenses to adult use applicants in this round of licensing. So they can't operate so no, without no a license, license, right? Yeah, from this round. And do you have some uh, anticipated time frame for that? Oh, we all wish we knew. Um, you know, we think the state will start issuing licenses in the next couple of weeks, um, but there really is no definitive timeline, in large part because they got so many thousands of applications. It just takes time for the Office of Cannabis Management to review them and process them. Okay. They, don't, they themselves do not know how long it's going to take them. But my question was, do they have a license? And the answer is no at this point. Correct. They do not have a license yet. <clears throat> they applied for a license. They're in the queue with all of the other applicants. Like I said, no, no one has a license yet from this round of licenses. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions from him, from the rest of the... Okay, thank you. You're Kevin, welcome. can you bring up the next person? Didn't you see there was just one? There was a... Anthony. Are any of you here for Bud Hampton? Yes. Okay, do you want to speak? No. No. Okay, because we're just about to, at the end of the speakers. Did you, Craig, did you want to speak again? No, no, my friend is doing Okay, you can ask the question. There's, so there are no hands on Zoom? No, no, no hands okay. at this point on Zoom, but we do have some questions from the board. Yeah. Um, sure. I just heard that attorney say that um, there's a social equity applicant 
for this license? Who? So I don't. Who is the social equity applicant? Yes. <laughs> My wife is the social equity applicant. It's a woman-owned organization. And that's the one of the qualifications. Yes, ma'am. So um, you have the MWBE um, certification through New York State, or is it? How do? What's the threshold? I just want to. Make sure I know what. Mr. Kaufman would have had that answer. He handled all that stuff for us. Okay. But, but my wife met, we meet all the criteria for a social equity application for a woman owned application. Okay. Corporation. Do we know where in the queue? Because I believe what I've read the paper mm -hmm. and I'm not an expert that as they're giving out, giving out licenses, they're starting with certain groups of people. Mm hmm. And Okay, so they gave out, the first round was about a year, a, a year ago, and they gave out three, 300 app, uh, licenses to what they called CARD applications, C-U-A-R-D. And they were <clears throat> their first social equity applications where people had marijuana convictions. So those were the first 300 licenses that were given out. Subsequent to that, they've only actually opened up about 20 some odd stores because people had a difficult time finding places to go. And there's also money involved in opening these things up, and a lot of these social equity applicants didn't have, have the um, funds to start. They required that the um, applicant own 51% of, of the business, and that put, in a business sense, it kind of changes things because a lot of the applicants that had marijuana convictions that own 51% can't, have the, don't, can't raise the money to open a store. So it was a, a catch-22. So the next round was opened up. <coughs> My wife applied. And she's very low in the queue. I feel she, very confident I'm going to get a license. She'll get a license. Is she 51% owner of the, of the company? 100% owner of the company. 100% owner. Can, can I just ask something then? Yes. Robert, okay. Just so I understand, with the licenses, so everybody, the public and the board understand. So we're in a pre-submission conference right now. So, <coughs> you know, submitting licenses, you know, ultimately would have to be done. It is my understanding, and I could be wrong about this, that New York State when they do their rounds, they issue preliminary licenses. And I, I thought it was that until and unless there was a vested right or something, maybe I'm wrong about this. Okay, so issuing, they, maybe you could explain the clarification about okay, how Okay, so they gave out preliminary licenses. Th th those were the initial 300. Okay. Then they gave out those licenses, and in doing so, you then had to go find a spot. Okay. So they were preliminary licenses until you found a spot, and the spot was approved by the OCM. Gotcha. It met its criteria. That, that was the preliminary, and once it was okayed by the OCM, then the OCM, Office of Cannabis Management, would then um, allow the license to be put up there. Okay. I was no, just, okay. That's it. Okay. So, to clarify for me, this is a pre-application, yep. so no application has been filed. Can an application be filed if one does not have a license to conduct the business? Yes. The conditions in the code say that uh, you cannot get a certificate of occupancy without a license. So a license would be a condition of your site plan approval, but is not required for processing the site plan. Okay, interesting. But it can't I, I open without a license. That. It cannot open without a license. Without a license. Count, count, council will double check for us. I'll give you the section. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. LaFaro, I know the section very well. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Uh -huh. So a license is actually, I understand the interest in the license, it's not actually relevant to this application. It'll be a condition of your approval, and he will not get a, or she will not get a certificate of occupancy until they have a license. And that's how, that's how the town decided to process this. Not requiring it for site plan, but requiring it for ultimate operation. But I think there were some community members that were questioning that part of the application. So I think it's helpful, it's helpful for me to understand mm -hmm. where you stand mm -hmm. and then you explaining where it is in the process. Sure. Okay. Would, would the physical works being done be completed, be contemplated without a license? Yeah, it's CO. So you right. could, okay. you could even I get a building that. permit. The answer is yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. And just to, to, to verify, the large application has been withdrawn. It has. It has. It's not pending. Okay. Are there any other questions? Anybody else want to speak to this application? Anyone else on Zoom, Kevin? One person. 
No. Okay. So one person. You said. One. Oh, one person. Sorry. <laughs> we would just ask this be closed with the 30 day written comment period. Did he say someone was speaking? No, no, they're done. They, 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 lowered oh, the they, they lowered the hand. Okay. So um, if there are no further questions from the board, entertain a motion to close with a 30 day written comment period. Motion by George, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Post abstentions, five in favor, two absent. <clears throat> So send whatever comments you have or tell your neighbors within 30 days. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Yes. Um, so are we all set with the... Um, We're going back to... 21 Columbia. The 21 Columbia. Right. We have... We, we have, have we have sufficient yes, notice. Yes, notice. Okay. okay. All right. So we're doing the twenty one Columbia. All right. so Please take notice that in accordance with local law fourteen of twenty twenty two, a public hearing will be held by the Southampton Town Planning Board on Thursday, February eighth, twenty twenty four at six PM at Town Hall, one sixteen Hampton Road, Southampton and via video conferencing to consider the pre application entitled twenty one Columbia Inc. The application proposes a six to seven lot subdivision of an eight to 24 acre vacant. Yeah, it's sorry, it's not um, written on here correctly. Six to seven lot subdivision with of an 8.24 acre vacant property situated in the R40 zoning district, New York State archeological sensitive area situated at 21 Columbia Avenue, Hampton of West Hampton. Suffolk County tax map number 900-354-3-2 and 3, uh, sorry, 2 and 34. Yes, please. Do you want to present want to speak it? to the application and present it? Um, Anybody? Actually, yeah. would you like to? Yes. I would like to hear any comments against it. You, you kind of have to. It's. The public doesn't know anything more than just the reading right now, so it's generally helpful if you can just lay out what you're seeking Certainly. to do. And My name is Victor Van Borkelo. I reside at 8 Homestead Avenue in Spionk, and I'm a contractor for the last 34 years in the town of Southampton, HVAC and R. And as of late, I've been uh, uh, developing and building uh, houses and developing real estate in the last 10, 15 years. And this is a project that uh, I acquired through a, a very good friend of mine who's also a client, uh, Barry Altman, you might know him. And uh, we're looking to uh, do something good for the community and for the, the housing market, which is extremely stressed. We don't have enough homes for people that want to work here. And uh, I want to put a few homes up. Affordable? So, are you looking at well, affordable housing? Well, we're going to, I think one was suggested, but I, I don't know. We haven't seen comments as of yet. This is approximately an eight and a quarter eight acre and a quarter acres. property, and you're looking Correct. to do a six to seven lot subdivision? Originally, it was actually uh, 24, lot, 24 lots back in the day, uh, and then the zoning changed, and then it was seven, and it was considered six with one affordable. Okay. That was the last iteration and it's in an r40 zoning category it's one acre zoning yes i just want to put and on the record that i um have done business with um <laughs> uh this individual as well as um the applicant and um so i just recuse myself from the if you still think you can be fair and partial then you don't need to recuse yourself but if you're more comfortable doing that certainly you can do that okay yeah just thought, and i'll show the board here to <coughs> help out a little bit you know, so the application includes a yield map and, you know, whether or not they're accurate, if there's any changes, obviously my report will, will identify it. But um, we're looking at six lots, um, assuming this, you know, would be identified as a road. We're looking at six lots. Uh, then they provided um, with the density incentive, the Long Island Workforce Housing Act uh, requires that you give the extra density. So this one shows one, two, three, four, seven. five, six, seven. Um, you know, again, it shows all flag lots, and we'll obviously comment and design uh, as part of this application. 
Uh, and then they also show one, two, three, four, five, six. They're showing the non-density incentive with six, just the six lots and they, a, a portion of open space as well. Cluster. A cluster plan. Um, and, you know, I, I think I wrote six to seven because I wasn't sure um, if they were doing the six or the seven lots, but p potentially up to seven lots with that seventh lot being the affordable lot. And where is the access? So the access right now is shown, it, this, this involves um, this piece back here, which is technically landlocked, and they also own this piece, which fronts on uh, Columbia Avenue. So the access would come through that? Columbia. Yes, that's, that's what the proposal is. And is that a lot, not a, not a, not a defined roadway? Or? This is a lot. Yep. So the access would have to come through that lot? That's what the proposal is. I believe there's some public here who are, uh, have questions about is that. Is that a paper street just south of it? Yeah, yeah but it, the, the question is, and then and, and someone's going to get to this, is that old file map. It doesn't it's an exist. old filed map. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It's an old filed map, and the question is raised about accessing a non-old filed map parcel from an old filed map parcel. I don't have an answer for that, but I'll let the issue get raised and then we'll, you know, we'll look into it. But okay. so, And then with the flag lot, so all six or seven, what's the width of the flag that they're proposing coming out to the roadway? I believe they're all 20 feet wide. Yeah. I have to double check, but I think you know, we'll have to look. With, with, uh, there was also a proposal. They're showing order. 10 feet wide here. Um, but I, I, I've said before, you know, they sort of showed it almost as a road, so I think that's what the yield map would ultimately show is, is the yield, final yield map would show a road, not flag strips. Flag strips we do as a matter of design as part of a subdivision, not as too much of a replace request. those flag strips with a hundred percent with yeah. a yes. road and yeah. take it. Yeah. For the yield purposes for mm -hmm. sure. And they, they would use that that parcel that has road access. I think it's hundred and twenty foot of road frontage. Just access to the road it's basically yep. not going to be used for anything else yeah i mean it, this that's correct if it's it's if it's one acre zone it look, doesn't look like there's enough room for yeah yeah it, it's being used exclusively yeah. to provide the access for sure. Columbia so, so is a little a bit of road. wood so columbia is a private road columbia is a private road. Yeah. True. We'll map to so the lot to the what would it be that's the north the east See, this is the, the, the lot that fronts right. on Columbia, so they would just be... North is and what about, the, yeah, is what about the parcel below that's not... These two? Yeah. Not... No. Nope. They're not owned by the, the, the applicant. Would that road then be proposed as a private road also? The one accessing the lots inside? Yes. Would have to be. Potentially, we don't know. We don't. Well, we don't. We, 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 we don't know that yet. Yeah, we don't know that yet. Um, when we do comments, if, if we're going to require a, a roadway, then the, the preference is to design them so that they could be dedicated. But then the question is, how does that work? I I don't have answers for it. Well, you can't dedicate Columbia because it's only forty. That's the problem. What's that say again? Columbia is only forty foot wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can never be dedicated to right. the town unless I can get. My neighbors to donate a little bit of. <laughs> and of some of, it looks like some of there's a house right where your cursor is off of Columbia, mm. and then is that a, is that just woods, and then it's there's a, a couple most, of houses further mostly woods. Down? Yeah, yeah, mostly woods. And actually, and we I'm also uh, were proposing a 20 foot buffer around the entire property, just to give a little privacy to everything. I don't know if it's shown on any of these surveys. Around the perimeter? Yeah, we were considering that. It might be. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to. We well, that would be a all site plan in detail. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, exactly. a subdivision, yeah. Okay, so um, we have some people who wish to speak. Joe Gaza, please. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Joseph Gaza. I reside at Five Ogden Lane in Quag. Um, I built the the home on Columbia, shown in the red little box on the map of the uh, Vanderbilt Estates, for my daughter, Blair, okay? Only about three years ago. I'll leave this map out so everyone can take So that's the, one, that's the one lot just the one lot, the house on it. Okay. Okay? Uh, I'm a, uh, just to make it clear, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a developer. I know you are. Okay, and I'm, uh, I'm near the, I'm not opposing or Joe, approving. Joe, Joe, speak to the board. I'm not opposing or approving this development. I have four points that I would like to bring out for the board's consideration and possibly you know, some information from yourself, okay? Uh, 
Point number one would be that the, the subdivision map that you're proposing to take access through, when it was laid out and developed in the early 19, 1904, 1910, there was a, uh, a strip of one foot strip of land at the end of the private road that went into your property. Joe, you're not being picked up because you're not using the microphone. Okay. All right, sorry. That's better, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's Is this better? Okay. The, the subdivider of Vanderbilt Estates, when they did this map, it's an old, it's an old filed map, they had the foresight to want to make it a, an exclusive map. And they left a one foot strip along the dead ends of all the roads, which the developer retained. Okay? So no one could use the roads to get through his map. Interesting concept. I've seen it before. Okay? Now, the, uh, the developer here is not proposing to use those roads, so that shouldn't really matter. But the developer is proposing to go through the map, which had the map has private roads. They're not public roads. Okay? But to finish up with the point, that was, that was the end of point number one. Number, point number two, the, um, the private roads on the map of Vanderbilt Park are for the use of lot owners on the subdivision map only. They are not for giving access off the map. And as an owner of a lot on the map, you can use the roads to get to your lot, okay? But not to get to your property off the map. I'm not sure I quite understand, but speak well, to the board. Uh, okay, and in, in support of that, I have uh, two Supreme Court cases, which I've... Thank you. Thank you. I've submitted to our chairperson, Madam uh, LaFaro, in advance of the meeting. You received them, the two Supreme Court cases? No, okay. Did not? You might well, want to give them to council. Yeah, I submitted them to the planning board. They were supposed to be distributed. They didn't they did get not. to you. I think okay, council well, should have one. The uh, New York Supreme Court, on two rec one recent and one older case, determined that a person who owns land off the map is not allowed to use the private roads on the map. Okay? And that decision was not only confirmed by the Supreme Court twice, but it was confirmed by two prior chairpersons of the planning board, uh, Mr. Halsey and... Um, but if you own the property... Guys. Sir, sir, no, sir, no. Can we can't. We can't. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the letters uh, stating that are attached to the, uh, the two uh, maps that I just distributed, confirming uh, the opinion of the town attorney at the time, Ted Sharitz, that yes, an owner off the map cannot use private roads on the map. Okay? So that's, that's a tough issue to overcome, but you maybe you have some ideas on that. Uh, point number three, <coughs> The, I've, I've studied the applicant's application and it states that there's you know, no environmental issues with the map, with the property. But if you look at the, the submission, which I just handed to you, you'll notice that the eight acre parcel was a former dumping area. And it's, it's shown on, on the map. It's, so it was, it was completely used for dumping. And there is a report, a part of your file that was prepared by Mr. Wilcox when this application was presented to the planning board 10 or 15 years ago, stating that there's an excavation 10 to 15 feet deep that was filled with construction debris, at least five feet thick. Uh, this hasn't been addressed, and I, I certainly 
would want to see, you know, if I was uh, developing, I'd want to clean up the property before I came to your board. But I don't know if that has been in the works or is proposed. Um, I don't know the status of the environmental pollution that's in the ground on the eight acres. I do know <coughs> that my daughter's home, which is adjacent to this property, is, as shown in red, we put a well in and it wouldn't pass. And the health department rejected it. We did it, tested it twice. And it caused me to install a public water main down um, Columbia Avenue. Yeah. At a cost of about twenty, twenty-two or $23,000, so we could get potable water for my daughter to drink. The water was not potable. So there's, there's some pollution in that area. Where it's coming from, uh, no one has made up the decision on that yet. But the pollution there, and it's, the, the water does flow to the south. Okay. Um, let's see, I think I had one more issue to discuss, and um, that will be the end of my comments. The, the planning board itself, not too long ago, in connection with my, my application for my daughter to build on the, the red parcel, which is on an old filed map, um, it is less than one acre, and the, the zoning is one acre, but we did transfer to the town through the development right process the additional land to bring it up to 40,000 square feet. And we did some improvements to the, uh, the roadway based on road review and what re fair requirements were, because it is a private road and only to be used by the owners of the lots on the map. And as you can see on the approved development section, which was dated uh, March 22, 2018, the planning <coughs> board eliminated access over the streets, those streets that had the one foot strip on them, it was reserved. The planning board stated that those are roads to be abandoned and not <coughs> used for access. So the planning board, in, in, this, in their approval of the map next door, did not want to see access through the streets. And the subject parcel, which you have in shown in yellow to get your 20-foot flag strips over, has been designated as a building site by the planning board, an approved building site. So that's the, the only silver lining in this cloud that the board has given approval to that as a building site, but if you transfer the rights. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think that that uh, concludes the cases are uh, a part of the uh, record, uh, Madam yeah. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Could you share the um, well water testing results with um, Council or with Anthony so that he could put that in the record? Yeah, yeah I'll get that from my daughter's okay. file, certainly. Um, okay, we do have some other people. Okay. Thank, thank you for the time. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have Steve Higgins. Yes. <clears throat> Hello. My name is Steve Higgins. I live at 16 Columbia Avenue, uh, West Hampton. Um, my biggest concern of this project, I don't know much about it, and we haven't been told much about it, um, is the road. Obviously it's a private road. <clears throat> Every time we call regarding the road, it's already, the town knows it's a private road. There's no maintenance on it. <clears throat> There's no drainage on it. And with the traffic that, if this does go through, between the heavy machinery, um, the deliveries of lumber, the construction vehicles, how are we to get out of our houses. The road is nowhere near 40 feet. If someone does go out and look at it, it's got potholes at least a foot wide, probably, I'm going to guess, 8 to 10. It's almost impassable in the summer with the dust, the dirt, the rain. It just drains all this dirt down into uh, our house. Um, 
down a little further in front of, I believe it might be 26, the way the road pitches down on rains, not even a true heavy rain, it floods out to the point when I walk my dogs, I call it Lake Columbia. We actually have to walk on a property, a neighbor's property to get through. Um, from what I understand, the, the whole width has to be 50 feet to put a 40 foot road in. That's impossible. And um, I know I'm not gonna give up any of my property as it is to widen this road. Um, that's one of my biggest concerns right now. And I don't know if it's gonna be addressed. Um, the road's in poor condition, there's no drainage and I don't know what can be done, so it's just one of our concerns. There's a few people in the neighborhood that have expressed that. So where are you on Columbia there? Uh, I'm on 16, Anthony, I'm actually the right across the street from uh, Mr. Gaza's house, oh, okay. daughter's house. Oh, here we go, right here. Right, so <clears throat> Joe did put a drain up by his house, which helps, but the way the road is pitched, and I'm on a downhill, it just kind of floods out my driveway, which I have to go get a, um, a new dry well because it just floods out. And it's like a sheet of ice and a mud pile. So um, you've been through road review, though? I mean, doesn't road review require some paving? So but I would say, I, you know, the part of this is to gather information, yes. right? So we could look into all the issues. Um, putting Joe's discussion aside, which is going to require a very in-depth review on my part to figure all that out. Assuming we were processing the subdivision that was being processed and going to go through, our engineer, as part of the review, uh, is going to identify any road improvements that would be required um, as part of this subdivision, okay. as part of Columbia. What those would be, I, I couldn't tell you. It's not going to be uh, to a 50-foot wide right-of-way to a town standard since they don't have the ability to do it, but they will require whatever road improvements uh, that the road review deems necessary to bring the road into an appropriate condition for the additional lots that are being proposed. That's you know part of the review. Right. So our engineer does review that and we do, as a result, require. So currently, as whatever information they have given you today, there's no plan, there's no nothing no, of a road. It's just, this is the first, first part right. of it. Initial the review. And, and, and part of this review, when we scheduled this hearing, we referred this application out to the fire department, to the engineer, right. and in a few weeks' time, I'm going to have all that information. It's going to go in a report, and it's going to identify all these issues, and yeah. then so but, we'll see but, what more comes out of this review from from the other agencies. That all right, good, yeah, very good. And then, then it's public information. We're free to give it to you. Yes. Can I ask what year? What year did you build your house? Uh, the year I believe it was what? What was it? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Did you do a road review? At, did you Did you go we through a road review? We didn't build it. We bought it off a builder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and it was actually dirt. It was a dirt road. And the town did come once every year or two, particularly by a, when there was an election year, they'd come and scrape it. <laughs> when Joe uh, had his, he had his house built, he did come and did a road, do a, he had a road improvement done. Right. Yeah, it's but right. now it's just it's, wear and tear. It's for we a got, limited it's for a limited road. Yeah, we, it's, right. it's all torn up. We have yeah. FedEx, UPS, everything else coming up and down that road. Right. So. And the town does not continue to maintain that. They do not. Well, when I call, the first thing they say is, oh, yeah, it's a private road. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's right. Yeah. It is. They're right. They're correct. Yeah, yeah, I mean. But they do help out. I'm not knocking them. They, if, for instance, there was a deer hit, and then the highway department came out and picked it up. Oh. They do help. I'm not saying they ignore yeah. us. Private roads, you get a discount on your taxes. I need a bigger discount. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a community a association that uh, manages the expenses for No, we do not. As a matter of fact, okay. two of the property owners on that road, out of pocket expense, have paved a portion oh, of the road wow. on their okay. own. Mm -hmm. um, but no, there's no way, no association. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, the, only, the only way there's any improvements, if there's a new building on that road, on that house, on that yeah. road, then the road review. And I've been through this many times. They've tried to do some improvements to, yeah, depending on the state of the road. If a new house is being built out, they probably say just kind of going and grade yeah. the entire yeah. street mm -hmm. instead yeah. of trying to asphalt up one small piece. Yeah. And you know, the, typically a road itself doesn't have to be 40 feet wide, but the right of way has to be 50 feet wide. The roads are typically 24 to 28 okay. feet wide within the right of way, so you'll never get a 40 foot wide road. But you know. Yeah, because right, currently right now, two, two cars of traffic, right. they couldn't even pass. You have to almost pull into the woods and to the dirt to even get, let one car go by. 
You know, okay. We did a lot of those things in Flanders, including with Joe. Great. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wants to speak, please? I don't have your name on here, so. I'm sorry. I didn't know what to expect, so I didn't find it. Okay. What is your name? My name is Dorota Sanchenko. I can spell it if you would like me to. <laughs> Please. Uh, D O R O T A. Last name is S A N C Z E N K O. Great. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm at 24 Columbia Avenue. Um, I just wanted to, on the record, re reiterate everything Steve has said because this road barely handles the traffic that it gets right now. Uh, the improvements that Mr. Gaza refers to were wonderful while they lasted, but it has been, I think you said three years, and already uh, the potholes are getting bigger, and it's only been three years, so with six new houses going up, potentially seven, um, those improvements I would expect would have to be uh, stronger, bigger, better, uh, I don't know. Um, I live, my driveway is right at the foot of uh, Lake Columbia, so <laughs> uh, the property across the street from me is uphill for me, everything drains, the you know, there's no proper drainage on the property. Um, my husband and I were thinking about doing something actually in the spring, but not knowing what's going to happen, we probably will hold off because we've already done something once. It's, you know, we've been there since 2010. So we've done something once and now years later it's falling apart and it's a big expense that a lot of the people that rent don't chip into. Um, so I just, I do have concerns about the road. And mm. I'm not the only one. <laughs> Great. Just, just about it. Can, do school buses come through your road to pick up? They do not. My okay. my kids have to walk to the All nearest. The yeah. So I actually I just drive them. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak? Okay. Anyone on Zoom, Kevin? For Columbia, twenty one Columbia. Mm -hmm. No? One person. One? Did he say one or no? I thought, I thought he said, he said one. one. Did you say one, one, one Kevin? Right now. Yes. Okay. okay. Ke Kevin, can you pin the um, speaker? Yeah. We hear you. Can't see you there. My name's Al Roberts. Robert Bacon. I'm a resident at 37 Columbia Avenue. Can you give us your name one more time? We didn't hear that. Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T, Bacon, B-A-C-O-N. Great. Thank you. Uh, I reside at 37 Columbia Avenue. Um, uh, my, my home is uh, the bird, pretty much the furthest north on uh, Columbia Avenue. And uh, I'll reiterate the other two people, the road is nowhere near uh, situated to handle anything more than what's there. Um, I, at my expense, I paved the road from my house up to Old Country, uh, Old Country Road because it was unpassable. I couldn't even invite guests to come to my house because the potholes were so bad. And uh, that got to my house, and I know past my house, what they're speaking of, they have those, those type of potholes. So to, to think that this road could handle six more families and the trucks to, to build this house, these houses, is, is, is ludicrous. Can't even, can't even possibly consider how, how, that, how that could be done with Columbia Avenue being, being, being being the, the access point for, for, for this new community. It's, it's, it's worthless. That's, uh, that's, that's my point on the matter. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, there's no one else to speak. I'll entertain a motion to close with a 10-day written comment period. By motion by Tom, second by George. All in favor? All right. Opposed abstentions, five in favor, two absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Judy? <laughs>
Yes, motion to adjourn. Motion. Anthony, motion explain to him what happens By now. George, okay. second by Glorian. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Aye. 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 Aye